Today on Yester Kitchen, oh, we're talking all about the history of the crock pot and we are making a dessert. You're gonna love it. Let's get started. Hey everyone, I'm Jill and this is Yester Kitchen. If you're new here, welcome. It would be an honor to have you join us as we explore retro history through food. Okay, so today, oh yes, retro indeed. Today is all about the crock pot oh or the slow cooker whatever you want to call it it is nostalgia and it's nostalgia that we use today i mean this is what we saw our parents cook dinners in we saw it on in every party maybe holding meatballs oh you know i love those or it's been on buffets it's been on the family dinner table we grew up with the crock pot and so many of us carry on the tradition by cooking dinners for us or our family or our parties in the same very, very fabulous slow cooking vessel. Okay, so I'm gonna get this out of the way, but today, so many appetizers have been made. As a matter of fact, I made one in the crock pot a few months ago called fondue italiano. If you missed it, I'll put it right there. Today, we are making a dessert in the crock pot because I thought we need to make a dessert in the crock pot. So today we're gonna be making apple brown betty in our happy little crock pot. I'll tell you why this bread has been sitting here, <laughs> sitting here in one second. But first I wanna show you well, this beautiful recipe came from Crockery Cookery, 1975. We actually did the aforementioned Fondue Italiano from this very book as well, from cookbook author Mabel Hoffman. Is she not gorgeous? Is that pure 70s from her crock pots to her hair, to her glasses, to her outfit? I love this book. It is full of so many recipes, but we're making a dessert right from there, apple brown betty. So I'm gonna get started. I'll tell you why the bread's here. I'll, I'll get started. And while I do this, I am gonna tell you the history of the crock pot. You're gonna love it. So the first thing I have in my happy medium sized mixing bowl is bread cubes, just like that. Now what I'm, the reason I have saved a bread for you is because I wanna show you that I bought bread that was sliced extra thick. So you can use that, you can buy a whole French bread, although you're gonna get way more bread than you need. <laughs> um, you only need four cups. So that's why I bought just thick slice, because if you have thin, it's it'll work, but thick is better. So just give that a try. So anyway, what I did, super, super easy to cube slices, four slices this way, four slices that way, bam, you've got this. So to this, we are gonna add three quarters cup of packed brown sugar. And actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna break that up a little bit just so it's a little easier to stir. There we go. We have an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. We have a half a teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, warming, warming flavors. And I'm gonna just kind of mix this just together just to get it going. So, who invented the crock pot? <laughs> well, the crock pot was actually patented on January 23rd, 1940. It was invented by a man whose name was Irving Natchemson. I'll spell that for you up there because it took me a few to get it as well. And he invented in his off hours. Now, it's really important that I tell you that he's Jewish because there's a reason. So I'm going to go ahead and add one stick of melted butter and I'm going to gently stir it around and get it all blended. So crock pots actually came out of a need for Jewish housewives, <laughs> believe it or not. So every Friday in Jewish tradition is the Sabbath. And that means that after sundown on Fridays, you cannot use electricity, you can't work, you can't cook, you can't drive, you have to walk everywhere, which is why if you're like in a Jewish neighborhood, you see a lot more um, Jewish people walking around on the weekends because they're very observant and you can't drive. And um, so anyway, cooking. So you had to have dinner on Saturday, right? Even though you couldn't cook. So Jewish housewives would start cooking on very, very low, 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 low fires or flames or ovens on before sundown on Friday and just let it go. So on Saturday, the meal would be ready. So anyway, Irving saw this and being the clever, clever man he was, saw a need and decided to do something about it. So he created the crock pot. So Jewish housewives can start their meals and it would cook oh so slowly. And they wouldn't have to do their work on Fridays and they would have their meals on Saturday. Break in history. <laughs> I'm gonna get this out of the way and I'm gonna bring in our crock pot. Okay, one more thing I have is I have four cups of Granny Smith apples and I have them cut 
go in like nice little bite-sized pieces. I actually put a little bit of fresh lemon juice around here and as you can see, it's working quite well because they are, they've been sitting for about an hour really and they're barely brown. So this is awesome. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna alternate layers of our bread mixture and our apples. <laughs> and I'm gonna chat with you while I do that. So if you don't know what a brown betty is, it's essentially a bread pudding of sorts, but there's no liquid. So as bread pudding, you know, you kind of make an egg, an egg custard and that kind of like holds it together. There's no egg custard. So it's a very crumbly dish. Okay, so let's get back to Irving. So as I said, Irving did invent the crock pot. He actually <laughs> decided to pass the patent bar so he wouldn't have to hire an attorney <laughs> for when he, when he had his patent. Yeah, and going back to what a problem solver he was, he had a few other inventions that I think you may have heard of. Irving also invented the electric frying pan and he did a very, very early version of the lava lamp. Oh my God, talk about 70s, right? So actually the crock pot, which was, was released in 1950 and history is kind of lost as to um, why there was a 10 year gap between the release of the crock pot and the patent, but that doesn't matter because it's here now and it became so, it was a little slow to start, but it became so popular in the 60s, it gave them more popular in the 70s, it took off. Why? I know you know the answer. Cause it was convenient, right? Moms were now in the workforce. She could put a dinner together in the morning, leave it, and then when everyone came home, dinner's ready, which is pretty much what we do now. And in 1950, the crock pot and all the rights were sold to the rival company. And the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> I love this. Okay, so who knew? Did you know how that started? I was, I just absolutely love the story. Okay, so our crock pot is gonna go on high and we're gonna cover it up. And this little guy is gonna sit between an hour and a half and two and a half hours, that's it. So after an hour and a half, check it. What you're really looking for is tender apples. So if your apples are tender by then, you're done. If they're not, keep going, and I will see you when mine is ready. Ooh, I already used this, my friends. I had to taste it. I, well, you gotta test the apples, right? You want them soft. So let's take a look. Ready? Always open a lid of steam away from you so you don't burn your face. Just a little kitchen tip from Jill. All right, so take a look. It's just, oh, look at that. It's just all mixed together. The sugars are melted, the flavors are combined. This is amazing. So my apples are very tender. I forgot to mention, I use Granny Smith, like I said, but you don't have to use Granny Smith. You can use whatever you want. You can use a combination of apples if you want. I just like Granny Smith because when you really cook them like this, they don't go mush. You know, the shape holds up. So, are you ready to serve? <laughs> I have my, are you ready for this? Are you ready? If you've been with me, you're gonna love this. I have my, Happy little serving bowl, look at this. Oh my God, I just died when I saw it and I knew you would too, okay? So I love this. So we're gonna take our happy little serving bowl and serve a little, whoop. Oh my goodness, you guys, this is just the flavor. It's like, you know, it's like apple pie, but it's, and it's like bread pudding and it's like just fabulous. Now I've had mine on keep warm. Now, the only thing left you can serve it as is, it's fabulous. You can pour heavy cream on it, that's very retro. You can put ice cream on it. You can make your own whipped cream. You can put Cool Whip on it. But my favorite, seriously, is old school. Old school. Look at that. That's probably gonna start melting because you know it is hot. But here you go. Apple Brown Betty, made in a crock pot, Oh my God, I have to take another taste because it's just, oh, I want the apple, not the whipped cream. <laughs> Guys, this is just amazing. It's simple. It's simplicity as finest. And because we have the crock pot, it's ridiculous easy. So thank you again, Irving Natchamson, for creating such an amazing, amazing cooking tool that has truly stood the test of time and is still going strong. If you would like to explore more dishes from your childhood or just the past, I invite you to subscribe. I release new videos every week. In the meantime, there's some retro dishes for you. And remember, 
every dish, even Apple Brown Betty from the Crock-Pot. Oh, definitely as a story. I will see you in the next video.